Hello, regular Drews. Hello. Welcome to episode 13, Tall, Dark, and Deadly, number 66 of the Nancy Drew Files. Well, aren't you a regular Nancy Drew? We sure hope so, and we hope you are too. Join us as we talk Nancy Drew cover to cover and click to click. Welcome to regular Nancy Drew. Oh, man, this one was definitely dark, like the title says. Mm-hmm. Want to do three words? Sure. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, dating? Mm. Murder. Murder. Yes, there's this, this features a murder. Which is very rare for a, for a Nancy Drew mystery. And I guess... Old people? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, no, no. Elder no. fraud? Yeah. Yeah, preying on elderly people. Wasn't that one of our ones for Alarx Berlin as well? Yeah, it probably was. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something more descriptive of like the salaciousness that I felt when I was reading it. I guess you just say salacious. salacious. Yeah, there salacious. you go. <laughs> yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. I really, really liked this one. I almost liked this one more than Stay Tuned for Danger. Really? Wow. Really? Really? That's good. The only reason I think it it meets ju- just at or slightly lower than is because there wasn't as much nostalgia with this one because I don't really remember it. But obviously, I remember Stay Tuned for Danger much better because of the PC game. Right. So I didn't have any nostalgia associated with this one. But I, I mean, like, otherwise, like, it was a really fun read. It oh, was yeah. really fun to read. A good book. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about the cover a little bit? Because oh, it yes. is super pink. Very pink. Very pink. And pink is my favorite color. It's almost actually, and I think I might have mentioned this in our last episode, it's almost actually our logo colors. Right. The, the hot pink and the blue. Nancy Drew blue. Do you have any insight onto what exactly they're portraying here? Because after reading the book, I still can't figure it out. No. I have to imagine that the blonde girl is Ava. Hmm. But hmm. we don't have a scene where Ava's reading a paper with two guys looking over her shoulder. Yeah. Unless that's Bess. And then she's looking at her, like, class registration paperwork. I don't know. Right. Yeah. No, so it's definitely not a straight takeaway from a scene from the book. But I imagined that, yeah, that was Bess. And that they were reviewing some something, some kind right. of paper related to the case somehow. The thing that I can't figure out, though is who the two guys in the background are supposed to be. Because (laughs) Vince, maybe, and Darian? I think one of them is probably Darian. I think, well, okay, we're going to have to talk about that too. But I think the guy with the floppy hair is probably Darian. But the the guy that looks like, yeah, the guy on the left. But the one on the right that looks like Danny Tanner from Full (laughs) House. He does. I can't figure out who that's supposed to be. Because no one in the story ever presents as being like that chipper. Right. <laughs> but this guy has like a massive smile on his face. And so unless it's supposed to be like the Dean, which I doubt, <laughs> I doubt because I don't even think the Dean is a named character. He might be, but I don't remember it. Right. <laughs> so like who is prominent enough to feature on the cover except yeah, Vince maybe or Luke. But he's our murder victim, so I don't know. I doubt he would be. I doubt it. Anyway, so interesting cover. But do you want to go ahead and jump into the summary? summary? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, we're starting. We're headed to another college campus, just like Mm -hmm. last time. We also have Gus with us, just like last time. They're driving. I feel like we've had many driving starts. Mm -hmm. Like, they they, they start the book off driving quite a bit. In the Nate's Drew files, or at least the last two that we've read. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nancy's busy. She's gone places. Yeah, it's midwinter appear- also, mm. um, which I also want to talk about. I have some theories about that. And they're driving to Halloway College to investigate a missing girl named Ava Woods. That's all we really know off the bat. Um, we know that she went on a blind date on Friday um, and hasn't come back since then. Um, and it's now Monday. So it's kind of important to keep the timeline straight on this. It's only been like two days. Right. That's all we know. 
but we're Nancy and Bess are on the way on their way to meet the dean to I guess enroll as students. <laughs> but when they go to talk to the dean, they learn that uh, Nancy has been hired by Mr. and Mrs. Woods, who are Ava's parents, and they are friends of Carson. And so that is how they knew about Nancy to call Nancy to ask for her help. Yes. Um, but yeah, Nancy and Bess want to be slightly undercover. So they ask the Dean to enroll them as students, or he says they're going to, he's going to enroll them as students because apparently they're having like this December, January term, Yep. but like of, of non-academic study. So students are just taking classes, but not for credit. It, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I've heard of like, May mini master or like a January mini master, but not not non academic, non academic what? study. But I mean the classes that this, sorry, <laughs> I don't want to get too sidetracked. But this is like this is I feel like integral to the plot, and mm. it doesn't make a lot of sense right off the bat. And the classes they take are like astronomy. Nancy takes astronomy. Best takes myths and traditions, which I thought okay that could track right. as like you know, uh, like exploring interests kind of a thing. Cause that's what he tries to, to, to say that it is. It's for students to like get an idea of what they might be interested in studying. That's what auditing is for. Right. Still don't understand why they um, do that without receiving credit for the classes they've taken, but. Well, they never even go to the classes. They go like the first day and then Nancy's well, like, there's no time for us to go to class. We have well, to go Well, I mean, other students are going to the classes, but Nancy and Bess are just enrolled so that they seem like they're students. So they have time to investigate. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Of course, they don't actually have time to attend the classes, Corey. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> The dean also does assign them each dorm room so that they can further blend in. And he even gets them rooms in the same building as Ava's room. So I think Nancy's room ends up actually being right next door. to Literally Ava's room. next door to Ava's room. How convenient. How convenient. How convenient that they have multiple spare dorm rooms in December that students aren't in. And a, a dorm room very conveniently located next to the missing student. Right. So convenient. Um, so Nancy tells Bess to go register for them and <laughs> which I guess maybe this might be a 90s ism that I'm just like not familiar with or whatever but apparently Bess just goes to the gym where she can just like sign up put people's names on lists for different classes and while she's doing that Nancy goes straight to the dorms to take all their stuff over there in the car and to really just jump right into investigating Ava's disappearance. I do legitimately think that's how classes enrollment worked before Mm. we had like online registration systems, but I doubt that you'd be able to just go sign anybody else up for classes. Like you think you'd need an ID. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. So Nancy goes straight to the dorm. She meets Maura, the basically RA, the resident advisor for the building. And goes straight up to her room and straight up to Ava's room. She knocks on Ava's door and she meets her roommate named Betsy Campbell. Um, And Betsy knows, already knows that Nancy was coming. The Woods told her that that she was going to be investigating. So she's not surprised to see Nancy. And Nancy talks to her and kind of asks her some questions about Ava and Ava's disappearance. You know, when did she last see her Um, and all of that. And Ava tells us that. Uh, she left on Friday for her blind date. And then when um, when Betsy woke up on Saturday, Ava wasn't there. And she just assumed that Ava had gone home for the weekend because her parents are kind of close and she did that. So um, she wasn't worried. But then she had gotten a couple of phone calls for Ava. And remember, this is back in the 90s when there were only landlines and people couldn't just text each other or didn't have their own personal cell phones. All of this could have been avoided had it been sent. Had (laughs) people had cell phones. Um, So she had gotten messages for Ava. And so she tried to reach Ava to let her know that people have been trying to contact her. So she calls the woods. And that's when she learns that Ava isn't with her parents. um, And that she actually never just came home from her blind date on Friday. I think Nancy then decides that she is going to go look for other friends of Ava's to see if maybe they've heard anything from them. Uh, but then she gets hit in the face with a well, snowball. Or did I skip a ahead? couple? A couple of important things to note. I think that I missed. Okay. So Betsy does give Nancy Ava's extra student ID 
Okay. So that becomes relevant later because apparently she had lost one. So she had an extra copy um, and then found it again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and then she also tells her about the elderly assistance program that Ava oh, works private. for. Oh, and she tells her that all she knows about the blind date is that his name was Jim and that he lived off campus. And Ava went to go pick him up in her car, but the, her car isn't on campus. It's still missing. So okay. she never drove back. And sorry, one more. <laughs> Oh, I know there's lots more, actually. There's no, lots more I wrote here that I didn't realize. It is an important conversation. Um, she tells her about Campus Connections, which is how Ava set up this blind date. It's like this student-run organization or student-run. It's run by this guy named Luke Jeffries, who is a student, who, I guess, takes applications and matches up blind dates for students. Yes. Interesting. We get the explanation <laughs> on that a little bit later when we actually meet Luke. There's a lot lot to it. It's lot weird. It. But, um, uh, and also, but it makes sense. Yes. Also, she tells us about the strange phone calls that she got for Ava, mm-hmm. which is why she was trying to get in touch with her. It was apparently um, seemingly an older woman on the phone, and she kept saying something about a box, about where is the box, or she didn't get into two specifics, but she kept asking about the box in a couple times. Tell, tell Ava that she'll know what I'm talking about, and she needs to call me back about the box. And- right, right. Um, And then as Nancy was leaving, Betsy kind of seemed like she had felt bad about kind of being the one to accidentally break it to her parents that she was missing. Mm -hmm. Almost like she was kind of ratting Ava out for being somewhere. And Nancy was curious about that. She was like, hmm, why is Betsy, why does Betsy feel bad about reporting her missing? Right. So that's kind of how we leave off on that conversation. But then, yes. (laughs) She hits it to the face by someone with a snowball. Um, she turns around and realizes this is not somebody just assaulting her for no reason. It's a guy who thinks that it's somebody that he recognizes, but it's not. It's Nancy. And he apologizes and introduces himself as Darian Oliveris. Is that how we say his name? Yes. Okay. Darian. Yes. I kept, I keep wanting to call him Darren. Yeah. And I think, I don't know if that's just like, I have, ac- I have dyslexia or something no. and I just can't read the I, but yes, it is Darian. He just starts flirting with her, and uh-huh. Nancy's just like, okay, whatever, kind of feels uncomfortable around him, it seems. Yeah, he, like, legitimately, like, asks her out on a date or something, and she's like, no, I'm going to Campus Connections to find a date. Ooh. Yeah. Um, she tries to brush him off, but yeah, no, like, he's super, like, creepily flirting with her. It's weird. But yeah, so she goes, after that, she goes straight to Campus Connections, and she meets Luke Jeffries who talk, tells, talks to her about Campus Connections and what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, he Initially, he gives her a form to fill out because he thinks that she's there to sign up. But when he comes back out, she's like, no, actually, I'm not sure that I want to use your service yet. Tell me a little bit more about it. Very clever, Nancy. Very clever. Mm-hmm. So she asks him some questions, basically leading up to the fact that He keeps records of the dates. He keeps records of every date that he arranges. And so she asks to see Ava's record, um, and he won't show her. He gets really weird about it as well. He does. No, no, you can't. Can't tell you anything about that. It's confidential and lets her know that whenever they set up the dates, all that they really provide is the name and phone number, but nobody else really knows where they're going or anything like that. So she asks him how he screens clients, and he says, basically, he doesn't. <laughs> he says that um, if you're a student, that's that's all you need to be a client. And he asks how she arranges dates, and he just does it based on time and day, I guess, and who's available. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, he just, like, checks with the other person to check on the time and day, sets it up with them, and lets them know the name and phone number and won't give Nancy a list of like who the gems are that he has in the service or even which gym Ava was supposed to go out with the previous Friday. Mm-hmm. Just kind of sketchy. I don't know. It just, it feels well, really weird that like we don't keep any records of who you're going out with uh, except here's the guy's phone number in case anything happens. Definitely. It definitely doesn't seem like there's a whole lot to the program. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's definitely concerning the most like to a certain extent, I think it's understandable that you wouldn't give out someone's file because that's kind of weird to ask for or potentially even who, you know, they were dating. But she asks if Luke will contact um, her date 
to talk to him and ask him if he would get in contact with her. Mm-hmm. And he won't even do that. Which is very strange. So that's fishy. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to want to keep, you know, privacy for your quote unquote clients. It's another thing to not even like want to reach out to them to ask them if they'd be willing to be in touch with someone. Right. You know? And Luke doesn't know that this is a missing person investigation. Mm -hmm. Nancy's trying to keep this all very quiet because Ava's parents don't want to, I guess, publicize that she's missing. They don't want a lot of worry or concern or embarrassment for Ava unless they know for certain that something is wrong. So yeah. Nancy's not, not mentioning them. That's the reason. So hopefully if, if he'd known that like we're looking for a missing person, hopefully he would have given it, but it's still, still right. a very sketchy situation that he was so unwilling to be helpful. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Oh, so I think at this point, like even we don't really know why the woods is, don't want to contact the police. Right. Um, and I honestly, their reason for it later isn't a great one either. No. But yeah, Nancy, Nancy has to kind of keep it quiet because that's what they have asked her to do. Is it just another reason for Nancy to go undercover? Maybe. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. But anyway, after that conversation with Luke, Nancy gets in touch with the Woodses to tell them that Ava's car is missing. Um, because that's kind of like our first biggest clue is that, we don't have her car. Mm-hmm. And um, so the Woodses give Nancy the car registration information because luckily they actually own the car. Ava's just using it. Mm-hmm. And she calls the police and tells the police about the missing car, gives them the registration info. And they tell her that if it shows back up again, they will reach out to the owner. And so Nancy goes back up to Ava's room. And mm-hmm. this is when, or she's going back up to her room, but her Ava's door is open. Just kind of, and so yeah. she peeks in and she sees someone rifling through Ava's desk. I'm like Ava, dun, is that dun, you? Dun. You're back already. Mystery solved. But, but it not. is not Ava. <laughs> no, no, nope. It is a woman who introduces herself as Maya Edenholm. So she kind of gives the excuse like, "Oh, so sorry. I'm just looking for paper to leave Ava a message." Uh, Nancy's like, okay, um, but so she tells Nancy, but never mind, I'll just give you the message. I work for uh, me and my fiance run the elderly assistance program. Ava didn't show up for work today. And so tell her that she's fired. She doesn't need to come back. You know, she left us high and dry, basically. Mm-hmm. Yikes. So yeah, and Maya seems pretty pissed off about this. Um, at least that's what came across as to me. And Nancy tries to kind of like tell her like, oh, you know, like, no, 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 please don't, you know, fire her based on anything that I've told you. Cause Nancy tells her that she is away mm-hmm. um, and that she hasn't been back yet. She hasn't found her yet. And uh, so she's like, no, 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 please. You know, I'll tell Ava that you have a message for her, but please, you know, don't, don't fire her because of me. Basically. Right. <laughs> I think she learns about Ava's client's name. So Nancy decides to call that mm-hmm. client um, to see if maybe a, like maybe the client knew where Ava was supposed to be going. Maybe she mentioned it. So she does call, but the client doesn't know anything. Right, 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 right. Um, and then she talks to Bess. Um, and Bess is apparently also signed up for Campus Connections and is going to start oh, trying yes. to date everybody. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> And to find Jim, Ava's date. Mm-hmm. Um, Nancy is like, Bess, what are you doing? This could be really dangerous. Um, you shouldn't just sign up for the same service where, like, now a girl is missing after using the service. Right. <laughs> um, but Nancy is like, okay, but you just can't go on any of your dates alone. I will go with you or mm-hmm. go and be there also. Which I think is a good, a good compromise. Yes. A good, smart way to investigate. And it gives them a, an excuse to be investigating these guys as well. So And go on a bunch of dates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Nancy talks to Mara, the RA, is that mm-hmm. right? Yes. Um, and she kind of says something interesting about Ava. She says that her parents are probably just covering for her being gone again. And Nancy's like, what? But so apparently Ava had wanted to go to Mardi Gras, but her parents wouldn't let her go. Um, but she sh- she said she was going to go anyway. Right. Um, and I was really confused about this because I thought it was supposed to be like January or December even. And I'm like, when 
is Mardi Gras. <laughs> and so I looked it up, but so apparently it can be, it can be for a long time, apparently. Right. <laughs> and I did not realize that, but so like it has to do with like feast days. Um, and so like celebrations start in new Orleans, like in January right? and continue to go until Mardi Gras. So I'm assuming that she wasn't going like, she didn't mean that she was going to Mardi Gras on Mardi Gras. She meant that she was going to New Orleans to participate in the like pre Mardi Gras celebration. Right, right. And apparently, just to clarify, not the first time she's done this. That often she and her parents will get into an argument, and then Ava's response is to just disappear or run away for a few days. So parents are, you know, this is kind of their reason for not wanting to bring a lot of attention to the situation until they know for sure that she's missing, because this might just be her defiance right yeah because she did the same thing last spring break and her parents actually called the police and so the police tracked her down i think she was in florida or something so the police tracked her down there and so she ava was really embarrassed about that um which i thought was weird too i was like i mean you should if be you embarrassed just run off if you just run off and you don't tell anybody where you're going or like your parents are concerned about your whereabouts, like after potentially you've lied about where you are. I mean, like maybe you shouldn't be surprised when someone calls the police. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Again, I don't know. all of this would have been solved had cell phones existed. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Oh, man. Um, but so apparently they had this fight about Mardi Gras on Thursday or Friday. So legitimately the day that she goes missing. And so it's like, okay. Come on. Are we are we investigating this for no reason and Ava's just on vacation and just didn't bother to tell anybody? Seems like it's a potential possibility at this point. Right. But we can't dwell too long on that because it's time for astronomy class, which is the class that Bess registered Nancy for. Um, but it's okay, though, because Ava was also apparently registered for astronomy. And so I guess Nancy goes there to investigate her astronomy class because that's got to be related. <laughs> so they go to, a, she goes to astronomy class and also in astronomy class are Luke Jeffries, campus connections coordinator, I guess you want to call him, and Darian Olivares, the creepy guy who was flirting with her and hit her in the face and knocked her over with a snowball, <laughs> assaulted her, I guess you should say. Um, and so Darian, like, creepily goes up to her and sits next to her again. Um, but she figures that she'll take this opportunity to kind of fish for information about Ava. Um, and so Darian tells her that she, Ava used to date this guy named Vince Parati and he is on the hockey team. He also like, he also alludes to her or to him being like dangerous Mm -hmm. Um, and so it kind of gives Nancy the idea that like, okay, maybe this events Parati is a suspect in Ava's disappearance. Maybe a little jealousy got in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ex-boyfriend, a dangerous ex-boyfriend, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing else comes from astronomy class. And Nancy then goes to ask the Dean for a list of off-campus students since, um, Luke wouldn't give her a list of the gyms or the gym that she went on a date with. Mm -hmm. So she's going to try to figure out who it was, the by brute force method by <laughs> process of elimination. Yeah. By looking at all of the gyms who live off campus. I think she decides that she would like best to try to go on a date with events through Campus mm -hmm. Connection. Mm -hmm. um, and is this when she heads back to the dorm and yes. there's the phone ringing in Ava's room? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She is on her way back to her room. She again hears, yeah, something through Ava's door. It's the phone ringing and she's with Bess at this point. And Bess is like, oh gosh, don't let it go to voicemail. So Nancy breaks into the room to using answer her card. using her meal card. Oh yeah. And answers the phone. She picks and a lot of blocks in this book. She sure does. She picks a lot of locks, I think, in the files in general. Okay. Um, I think she lock picked in two points to murder too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it seems like a, a a skill that is just peppered throughout all of the Nancy Drew files, much more than Nancy ever lock picked in any of the mystery stories. Because honestly, I don't think I can remember once that she did. Right. 
She's become more comfortable with breaking and entering as she's aged through the decades. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so when she answers the phone, it is another person's voice, also an older seeming female voice that just says the box is the key, basically, Mm -hmm. um, and then hangs up. And so Nancy can't get any more information out of that person. Very strange. Very spooky. She then decides that she is going to go try to check out this elderly assistance program, see what's going on there. Maybe she can find out something about these clients or this box whatever's going on there. Right. So she, she talks to Maya again and Maya tells her, never mind about firing Ava. Ava is one of our best employees. All of our clients love her. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to fire her. She's welcome back here anytime. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very quick turnaround from Miss Maya. But then she also meets Peter Hoffs, who is Maya's fiance and someone else. I guess he owns the program or they both own the program, whatever. She meets him. And learns a little bit more about the program. And she tries to subtly ask him about boxes to try to like, she invents like having a relative who is involved in a moving company. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, I would, you know, love to help out your program. And also my uncle owns a moving company. You know, he can sell you boxes. Do you need boxes? Boxes? Boxes are the, no reaction (laughs) from him. She's she's like, oh, whatever. She does also ask, um, like, how she would go about volunteering for the program. And he's like, oh, the waiting list is, like, years long. You'll never get in. Don't worry about Mm -hmm. it. We have too many people. So forget it, basically. She does leave her number. She leaves her number in case a spot opens up. But, yeah, but they're like, no, sorry. Yeah, we're full up. We don't need you. I've never heard of a volunteer organization. Turn away volunteers. I don't think it's volunteer, though. I think it's paid. I think it's a legitimate job. I do think it's a job. Because Still. I, yeah, I know. Still. Anyway. Um, but yeah, Nancy leaves her number. And then there's an astronomy lab that night. And so, <laughs> sorry. Um, I still think it's funny. Um, so Nancy goes to that. And apparently they are having, it's an astronomy lab. And in the lab, they're basically taking like a little field trip to the campus observatory mm-hmm. to um, that night to go see where it is because they'll be using it throughout their class, I imagine. But Nancy doesn't actually go to the lab, does she? Right. No, she doesn't. She's like, I I don't have time for this, basically. Oh, but what it was is because Luke is also in that class. She knows he's busy during this time. So because she couldn't get to the files earlier, she's going to break into the Canvas Connections office because she knows no one will catch her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So unfortunately, though, Darian is still hanging around like a creep. And so she has to like say, oh, I'm going to the bathroom. And he's like, I'll wait for you. She's like, you're going to wait outside the girl's bathroom. And he's like, no, bye. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> See you in class. <laughs> and so she yeah, sneaks over to Campus Connections and breaks in. Luckily, she finds keys to the filing cabinet, though, and opens that and finds Ava's file. But it's basically empty yeah there's nothing in there but like the one sheet that she signed up with like their little one sheet application thing no record of the date no record of names or anything like that Mm -hmm. which is strange because luke did tell us that he kept records of all the dates that everyone went on so if ava's file didn't have that in there clearly that's not true or he's just really bad at paperwork but yeah, right. she looks at other people's files and other she people's looks at files. Bess's file actually and right. sees that it's been updated. So if Bess's file from yesterday is updated, why is Ava's file from last week not updated yet? That's clearly not the issue. It's that something has been removed here, right? Suspicious. She also finds out though that Darian signed up for the program right after Nancy told Darian that she was signing up for the program. Hmm. Gross. <laughs> Doesn't she ask him about it at one point as well? And he's like, oh, no, I don't. Or no, he says he's used it plenty of times before. He says he's already used it. Mm -hmm. But that's a lie because he literally signed up right right after she did. So, which was this morning. Mm -hmm. So. Don't worry. This gets more interesting. (laughs) That's that's weird. (laughs) That's suspicious. 
Um, but she does manage to get on the computer and print a list of all of the different gyms who have signed up for Campus Connections. Mm -hmm. My question is, this is this is an aside, but my question is, how many gyms could one there possibly be that have signed up for Campus Connections and that also live off campus? Because now she has both of these lists. And so, you know, she'll probably cross-reference these lists to find all the gems that live off campus. But surely it can't be that many, except for the fact that later she goes to visit and there are at least three. Right. Ha That's a lot of gems. <laughs> right? I guess that was just a really popular name in the 80s. Anyway, sorry. I digress. Um, so, yeah, she prints that list and then she hears a noise outside. She's like, oh, shoot, Luke's coming back. I don't have anywhere to hide in this office. And also the front door that I came through is the only exit. So I'm just going to have to, you know, go out and face him and just improvise, yeah. I guess. She's got to bluff her way out of the office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But as she steps out of the door, someone immediately hits her over the head mm -hmm. and she passes out. Doesn't get to see who it is. That, okay, that also, I'm sorry. How is it that you walk out of a doorway and you don't see the person who attacks you? How? Maybe they're standing next to the doorway. Like, but like, waiting but for here's the doorway and here I am walking through it. My peripheral vision, I can see 180 degrees. Right. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't get a good look or maybe the bonk on the head distorted her right, memory right. of what, what yes, the potentially, like. Yeah, potentially she was looking to the left instead of to the right or something. But regardless, yeah, Whatever. she gets knocked out, passes out. Mm -hmm. When she comes to, she's inside of the Campus Connections office, not outside of it where she had just exited the door. Mm -hmm. And then she hears the elevator open up. She's still really groggy. She doesn't know what's going on. Um, she tries to get up, and as she tries to get up, she sees laying next to her Luke Jeffries shot dead on the floor, mm -hmm. blood everywhere. Police come running out of the elevator, shouting, hands up where we can see them. Freeze. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, yikes. So she also looks around and she notices that the office has been ransacked. Nancy is taken to the police station and questioned. She is like suspect numero uno because mm -hmm. obviously she was in the room where Luke was dead. This is also something that I find a little bit unrealistic because Nancy yeah. had a head wound. Nancy had been attacked. Nancy was passed out and just waking up. And yeah, someone was dead on the floor next to her. But like she had been attacked. She was like... <laughs> At best, the interview with the, the police chief or whoever would have taken place in a hospital room, you know, right. they would have taken right. her to the hospital, gotten her checked and then gotten her statement or arrested but, her at that point, something, but not taken her directly to the station. Yeah. While she's there, the, like a cop there, so she's like, sorry, I've been hit on the head. Like, I don't, I'm like, not, I can't answer, you know, I'm not doing well right now. Mm -hmm. And he looks at the bump on her head and he's like, you're fine. You don't know what a head injury looks like. Nancy could sue the police station. Nancy could sue. And she should. She should. Anyway, they take her to the police station and she's questioned. She explains that she is investigating Ava's disappearance. And basically the only reason why they don't put her under arrest is because there's no murder weapon. She doesn't have a gun on her. There was no gun at the scene. So since they don't have that murder weapon, they can't necessarily tie her to the fact that Luke Jeffries was shot. That makes sense. Right. So she's able to leave. As she's exiting the police station, who is there but creepy Darian Oliveris? Oh, but first the um she's when she's talking to the police officer that is questioning her, she's like, Well I'm I'm gonna continue my investigation because oh, right. you know I got hired for this and the police officer's like, well actually not anymore because her parents just turned it over to the police. So we find out that Nancy is off the case. officially off the case, right? Right. But right, then, right. yes, we do see Darian. Mm -hmm. He tells Nancy he's there because he's helping the police with the investigation. And Nancy's like, okay. But he says he'll give her a ride back to campus. She says, okay. He goes to get the car. And as he's going to get the car, she asks the desk sergeant, hey, really quick, you know, this guy says he's helping with your investigation, is he? And the desk sergeant says, I can't really tell you about an active investigation, but I can tell you that I've never seen that guy before. 
the police are super sassy in this one. They I've are. noticed. Um, which is a little bit more on brand. <laughs> or not on brand. It's a little bit more realistic. That's mm-hmm. what I mean. So I appreciate that realism. Kind of suspicious that he's not even really there to give a statement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why is he there? Nancy still gets into the car with him, though. She does, because she's a crazy person. Not only that, she starts asking him if he has anything to do with it. Nancy! She's like, "Um, the police said they've never seen you, that you're not helping with the investigation. Why are you here? Did you kill Luke Jeffries? Basically is what she asked him. And he says, don't accuse me of murder if you want to ride. Which oh, is not bad advice, God. but like, ah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but creepy because he also doesn't deny it. Right. He also doesn't deny his involvement. He just says, don't accuse me of murder if you want to get back safely, basically. Why does Nancy wait until she's in a confined space with someone to accuse them <laughs> of murder? I don't know. Maybe she's better in enclosed space. Maybe she's a scrappier fighter. And so she just thinks like, OK, well, I can take him in the car. You know, until he takes you out to wherever Ava is and buries <laughs> you with her. Goodness, oh, that's not man. That's not what happens. She makes it back to campus alive. Don't worry, <laughs> <laughs> Nancy's fine. Yeah, but so he does take her, yeah, safely back to campus, as you said. And so she goes up to her room, and there is a threatening note that's been pushed under her door that says, and we have a lot to talk about with this note later, but it says. Transfer back to wherever you came from. What happened to Jeffries could happen to you. (sighs) Someone's threatening to murder her, Mm -hmm. basically. Nancy is like, it's okay. That note doesn't scare me, though. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) Because literally what we're supposed to believe has just happened is like potentially five hours earlier, Luke Jeffries was murdered. And then like somewhere after that, the same person who murdered him immediately wrote a threatening note to Nancy and pushed it under her door. Mm-hmm. Not five hours after a murder. Why not just murder ah! her right then when she was in the whatever. Right. And well, that's what Nancy brings up and as to why she is not scared. She said, if they wanted me dead, they would have killed me when they killed Luke. Right. So I guess that's fair enough logic, but still very frightening. Do you want to risk it, Nancy? <laughs> Um, of course she does. Of course she does. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't even tell Bess about this note, I don't think. Because the next day she just decides that she wants Bess to go visit the elderly assistance program to see that if she can get a job there, even mm-hmm. though Nancy couldn't. And then she also is able to reach the Woodses. And she basically asks them to meet her on campus. Um, and so they do. And she basically confronts them about the fight and be like, why did what happened with that um and they just said yeah we didn't want to contact the police because of last time we didn't want to embarrass ava if she had just taken off to mardi gras and not told anybody which (laughs) why not (laughs) i don't understand especially as like her parents you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i don't know whatever i'm not a parent i guess Embarrassing um, is like the best case scenario in this. Right. Situation. Like, so right. what if she's embarrassed? She's alive at least, right? That's well, what's important. Well, and also, and also, like, as a parent, I mean, like, I imagine it must be hard being the parent of an adult, um, mm. especially like a new adult. You know, you know, probably struggling between you having basically control over their life potentially just like less than a year ago, right. and now they're able to make their own decisions. I'm sure that's difficult. Of course, but like. For, a, like, a child to be like, hey, I'm going to Mardi Gras. I don't care what you say. <laughs> or or just, like, not telling you where they are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it just seems like, I think it's probably acceptable for you to, like, want to somehow create consequences for that child making a bad decision. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, the the most, like, le- I say the least, the least consequential thing that could happen to them from that bad decision is having the police track them down and checking right. on their welfare. Right. Like the most consequential is murder in right. at Mardi Gras. <laughs> she could have anyway. been murdered, but she could be embarrassed if this isn't that. So let's just play it let's safe just and not embarrass her. Mm-hmm. Which, what does that even mean? Like, oh, some people are going to know that the police came and checked on her. Maybe a rumor goes around for like 30 minutes and then it's over with. But like a rumor that what? A rumor that what? 
that she went to Mardi Gras? Like, what's the right. rumor? What's the bad rumor? I don't understand. She's especially if it's true. Like, yeah, big like, deal. She went to Mardi Gras. <laughs> like, yeah, she went to Mardi Gras. Her parents freaked out. Call the cops. Big, big rumor. Like, everybody's so scandalized. <laughs> Whatever. Oh yeah, not a good anyway. reason. But so they also tell her that they think it's best probably that she not investigate anymore because now like with her car missing with all of this stuff and now with Luke being murdered, it's probably best that the police take over, Mm -hmm. which is the first logical decision maybe that they've made. Mm -hmm. And yet Nancy manages to convince them, well, I'm already, I've already started investigating. I'm still here undercover. Nobody knows, you know, that you know, everybody thinks that I'm a student. I have more mobility to investigate. People will open up to me better than they would the police. And Mrs. Woods is like, hmm, you're right. Okay. <laughs> How about it, Nancy? Yep. So, yeah. So she is able to get back on the case after talking to the woods. And then she decides that she is going to go try to track down Vince, um, Ava's Mm -hmm. ex-boyfriend. So she goes to the hockey practice and basically just absolutely fails in the conversation with him. Like he's like walking off the course and she tries to invent like a brother who is interested in hockey. And he's like, well, yeah, just have him email me if he wants to talk to me about it or whatever. And then just leaves. Yeah. And she's like, oh, bummer. (laughs) Where did she think that was going to go? Anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I just absolutely feel. But is this when Nancy goes to talk to the gyms? Yep. That's the next thing on the list. Because she doesn't have any luck there. She decides she's going to go look for the gyms that live off campus. She gets to the first one and he's like, why why is somebody else here asking me these same questions again? And Nancy's like, what? He's like, yeah, somebody was just asking me the same questions like two hours ago. And I already told them everything. So get the information from him. I'm not talking to you about anything. Right. And Nancy at first thinks that this must be the cops, that the cops have been investigating this as well. And so she's like, okay, well, maybe I'll go to the next one and it'll be different. But then she goes to the next one and he says the exact same thing Mm -hmm. um and so she asks a little bit more about this person well what do they look like or whatever and what is it that they say i forget what darian looks like um but basically they describe darian Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and so she's like okay so darian Oliveras has beaten me to every single one of these guys i think she visits one more but also she has no luck there right yeah Kind of strange. He gets to all the gems right after her. So she's thinking, hmm, is he following me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Probably. Pretty safe assumption at this point. Right. And so she gives that up too. And she goes back to the dorm because she has a headache. She's like, because she just had a head injury the day right. before. And she's like, oh, I keep hitting dead ends. I'm going to go lay down. But as she is walking into the dorm, someone is like, hey, it's you. And she's like, and what? <laughs> and they show her a newspaper, recent newspaper article that's just come out mm-hmm. on the front page, plastered across is Nancy being put into a police car. And it's like talking about Luke Jeffries just being murdered. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's a complication. So now everybody knows that Nancy was arrested basically or brought to the station by the police in connection with Luke's murder. So everybody thinks that she's a suspect in this murder, which I guess she is, but Mm -hmm. um, that's a complication. But she also notes that the article was written by someone that just went by Espia, Mm -hmm. which is Spanish for spy. And somehow she automatically connects us with Darian. (laughs) I don't know how. I feel like that might be a little bit of a leap, but she Mm -hmm. does. Um, She's also able to talk to Bess very soon after that. And Bess tells her that she was able to get a job at the elderly assistance program. Strange, because Nancy was put off pretty strongly, but apparently they just gave her a job right away. Mm -hmm. There's lots of weird things going on in this mystery. Lots of Mm -hmm. people doing and saying mysterious things. Luke being really defensive. Darian lying about why he is everywhere and everything that he does pretty much. And also now these EAP people are, you know, acting weird too and giving Bess a job when they said they couldn't give Nancy one. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Strange. 
Bess also does say that she managed to get a date with Vince. So she and Nancy are going to go on that tonight. I think it's at like a pizza place or something. So Nancy's going to go like 15 minutes before. And then Bess is going to come in and sit like at a nearby table and wait for Vince to come in. Right. So they do that. (laughs) And Nancy is in the booth. And she is listening in to Bess's conversation with Vince. And Bess is doing a fantastic job. Oh, yeah. Because Vince comes in, like, really upset and frustrated because of all the stuff that uh, was on the front page. Ava's now missing. Now he knows. You know, now he sees that Luke Jeffries is dead. He's really concerned Mm -hmm. about Ava. And so he's like, look, I'm sorry. I think I'm probably going to have to cancel. I'm just not in a good mood to have a date right now. And Bess is like, oh, no, no, please. Please at least eat this garlic bread with me. Just stay till I finish my drink so I don't have to be here alone. And then we can go. Right. And so, yeah. So he does. And then she starts to, you know, get him feeling a little bit better. She starts to make jokes with him, asks him, you know, like, what's going on? Are you okay? That kind of stuff. He starts Mm -hmm. to open up to Bess really nicely. Like, he talks about how he is really yeah really upset that he can't help the police more um, Mm. because he hasn't really been talking to Ava recently because they broke up Um, and so he just but he still feels really badly about it Um, but then (laughs) Nancy is like okay well he doesn't seem dangerous right now I'm gonna get up and go to the bathroom (laughs) (laughs) besides that he is genuine that he really actually did just find out about this about Ava missing right Um, and so as she's coming back she has to like say excuse me really loudly to get around these people and as she says that vince looks up notices her and sees her notice recognizes that she is the girl from the newspaper and goes and pushes her against the wall and calls her a murderer Mm -hmm. starts screaming makes his whole scene in the pizza restaurant the owner has to come over and be like do i need to call the police but Bess is able to like calm him down and get him outside Another shining moment of Bess. It's wonderful. So Nancy goes outside and then they both explain to to Vince like, oh, no, we're actually here. We're investigating Ava's disappearance. You know, don't worry. I I didn't kill her. I didn't kill Luke Jeffries, (laughs) which I guess he just believes. But he does say that he wants to, you know, he's sorry about inside and that he wants to help Nancy. If there's any way that he can help her investigate, he wants to. And so they're like, okay. And as they leave, Bess says that Vince is still in love with Ava, which is interesting too. We'll have to talk about that because Nancy totally, she was like, she makes some remark that I can't remember exactly, but but Nancy didn't realize it. And mm-hmm. she's like, what do you mean? And, and Bess says, he's obviously still in love with Ava. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously. So interesting. Poor Bess, always going on (laughs) dates with suspects in in murder investigations, and then they always end up back with the girl or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm spoiling Mm -hmm. things, but anyway. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, so they go back to the dorm, and Nancy talks to Betsy, and she says that Ava had gotten another voicemail, um, and that someone left a message that said, oh, gosh, something about switching the boxes or just switch. Oh, here it is. The The voicemail message says, it's me. I checked the place and I'm assuming you arranged the switch. Otherwise, we're in trouble. Please call me. Mm. Interesting. So it's the same voice as before. Nancy realizes, but like ultimately still a really super cryptic message. Mm-hmm. But the next day, Nancy decides it's time to take a trip to the newspaper office. We're going to go <laughs> confront Darian. Mm-hmm. This is what I don't understand is like, I, I get that it's really obvious that Darian is, you know, following her. And it's probably obvious too that like, he is the same person who wrote the front page article or whatever, the SBF. But yeah. Nancy just confidently, so confidently goes in there and says, I'm here to see Darian. <laughs> and it's like, we, she didn't even like preface to the reader that she had a hunch and she was going to go test out the hunch. Right. Just It's just like, we just know. We just know that's Darian. Don't worry about why. <laughs> it's just him. It's just him. Anyway, <laughs> so she goes to the newspaper office and she asks to see Darian. And they're like, she he's in with his girlfriend, but you can probably go ahead. Girlfriend? Darian. Ooh, fascinating. A lot of flirting and signing up for dates for someone that has a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. 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 
So Nancy goes and knocks on the door and opens the door. And Darian is in there with none other than Betsy, Ava's roommate. Scandal. Plot thickens. But so Betsy's really irritated with him. (laughs) She's really pissed at Darian because, and she tells Nancy too, she's like, yes, okay. Initially, I was the one who told him that you would be investigating. So, you know, that's why he's been following you around. But he's screwed everything up and he's taken it too far. um, And I'm really sorry and all that stuff. So Betsy is, you know, not too culpable, I think. Right. But so ultimately, the important part of that conversation is the fact that Darian says that he saw Ava's car that morning because Betsy said, oh, the one thing I didn't tell him about was the car. Mm -hmm. And he says the car and says, oh, Ava's car has been missing. And he's like, no, it's not. It's over by the science building where it always is. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, what? So they go to look at the car. And I think Nancy looks through the windows. She doesn't break into it, I don't think. I don't know. Or does she? I think they are able to get into the car. uh, But basically, Nancy just concludes that this means that Ava cannot be in New Orleans. She can't be at Mardi Gras. um, Because how would the car be back here? And she's still missing, you know. So there's the one possibility that Ava either did come back and now she's just like at class or something and everything's fine. Or the people or person who took her brought the car back to avoid suspicion. Right. A much more sinister thought. Right. Cause yeah, that would mean that Ava wasn't in, you know, possession of the car anymore. Right. For whatever Which is reason. Very concerning. So Darian yes. now promises that he is going to back off and just let Nancy go about her detective work. Mm-hmm. So back at the dorm, Bess introduces Nancy to Sophie, another um, elderly assistance program employee. And they, uh, Nancy pretends to be somebody else. Nancy gives a fake name and mm-hmm. they talk about Peter. And Sophie kind of just goes on and on about how everybody loves him. Everybody has a crush on him. And he's also a sculptor, apparently. He, um, so makes, amazing. Right. <laughs> he makes... Um, sculptures <laughs> i don't know but like yeah she's kind of fawning over him but mm-hmm. i think that's the only relevant part about it is the fact yeah, that he just sculpts get the info about peter uh, and then we hear some commotion going on down the hall as nancy's headed back to her room and she thinks oh gosh people have found out that i'm the supposed murderer and they've come to mob my room but that's actually not what's going on but then she realizes no actually the mob is here for betsy and ava's room next door because the room has been ransacked mm-hmm. Mora's there and bets i think betsy's there too mm-hmm. so nancy goes in and um they call the police and everything Um, And the police tell us that the lock wasn't broken, that whoever it was must have had a key. So Betsy confirms that the room was locked when she left, so it couldn't have been just left open. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem like anything is missing. Um, She asked Betsy that, too, and everything still seems to be there. Mm -hmm. But except for her textbooks. Her textbooks are missing. Where are her textbooks, Betsy? Betsy's like, oh, they might be in her backpack. Well, where's the backpack? Oh, she probably left it in her locker at the gym. We didn't know she had a locker at the gym. Let's go check that out. Mm -hmm. So they actually have to call Vince because he's the only one that knows the combination to her locker because Nancy admits that she does not know how to pick a combination lock. That is her one one weakness in this story. Like I said before, I think we need to have a list of Nancy's skills and Nancy's things that she can't do. And one of those things is... Take animals to the vet when they need to go to the vet or like <laughs> treat animals like broken bones or whatever. And the other one is pick combination locks. Yes. <laughs> Key locks, no problem. Right, right, right. Combination locks off the table. So we go, we go to the gym, we go to look for the backpack um, and we do find some stuff in here. Nancy finds mm-hmm. a little key and a piece of paper with an address on it. We specifically know that it is a safe deposit box key. Yes. Nancy's able to identify that from the way that it looks. Um, and yes, an address for 555 Pussy Willow Drive. Of course. Where <laughs> else? I just loved the fact that it rhymed. <laughs> 555 Pussy Willow Drive. Easier uh, to remember that way. Hilarious. <laughs> But so 
right after this happens, um, we go straight back to the dorm and immediately waiting for us in the lobby is Bess and Jim. Bess has found the mystery Jim. So apparently she had, this was a science nerd that she, or some, some kind of nerd, she said, that she just had a date with in the cafeteria. He was going to buy her soda at the cafeteria, which I thought was cute and yeah. a great idea for a blind date that you are not super invested in. Right. Anyway, <laughs> you never know who you're meeting. Some other rando student meet where you, you would probably be going anyway, where you can just get a soda. Perfect. Easy enough. But Bess, Bess kind of turns her nose up at it. But anyway, that's why I'm making a big deal out of it. But anyway, um, she finds Jim. And apparently he had had a date scheduled with Ava. He tells this to Nancy. But Luke called him to cancel it. The very last mm. minute as well. And the he very says last he minute. just ends up going to the dance instead. So she, he never actually met Ava at any point. So that kind of rules out Jim as a suspect. Mm-hmm. So basically now we're down to... <laughs> Who? Who's left as a suspect? We've ruled out Luke because Luke is dead. Mm-hmm. We've ruled out Darian because now we just know he's a reporter. Mm-hmm. Um, now we've ruled out Jim. We've also ruled out Vince. Mostly, so our, yeah. Mostly. So our list of suspects is pretty slim at this point. Is there's there anyone really, left? There's one person or two people left, I guess. And well, we have the mystery phone calls as well. We don't know who right. that is still. Right. Uh, and Nancy decides at this point, well, you know, I didn't find anything in the campus connections office. What else could help me figure out what Luke's motives were for rescheduling the date at the last minute or at least telling uh, Jim that the date was rescheduled? And so Nancy decides to enlist Darian's help to go search through his dorm room, through right. Luke's, Luke's room. Yeah. And so Darian is able to get into the building because it's a guy's only dorm and he's a guy. So he can get in Mm -hmm. and he lets Nancy in and they sneak upstairs, but they don't find anything in his room. And they're like, okay, well, where else can we look? And Nancy says, hmm, how about his mailbox? I wonder if he got any mail. Mm -hmm. And Darian is like, that is such a great idea. So Darian is like learning things from Miss Nancy Drew here, Mm -hmm. which I really appreciated. Um, But so they go down to his mailbox and there is a bank statement in there that Mm -hmm. shows a recent deposit for $500 that was just deposited on Friday morning, Mm -hmm. the same time or like right after the date between Jim and Ava was canceled. Pretty suspicious window of time. Uh, So Nancy decides that she is going to call the dean and see what she can figure out with regards to the, I guess, student credit union that is on campus. The the bank that he was using found out that that it was a cash payment. And that he withdrew the exact same amount on Monday, the day after he talked to Nancy. Not only that, but like an hour after he talked to Nancy, like directly after. So he must have gone straight from meeting her straight to the bank to do this. Mm-hmm. Even more suspicious. So to right. and so Nancy kind of thinks about this and she's like, okay, so he got the money right when he canceled Ava's and Jim's dates. So someone paid him to cancel this date. And then he takes the money back out right after I try to find out information from him. Presumably he, right after he finds out that Ava's missing. Right, presumably. And mm-hmm. so he's probably going to try to return that money to whoever it was that paid him. And then later that day, he ends up dead. Right. Right. Mm. So who paid him? Whoever paid him is probably the person who killed him. Right. Fascinating. Uh, So then we go back to the dorm and we meet Bess again. She just says that she has finished her shift with the elderly assistance program not really much comes of this conversation except that her like client dropped out. So she had to switch to a different client, but neither of those clients had ever worked with Ava. So she didn't really find anything else. And Nancy decides that she's going to go investigate the, the address that she found in the backpack. Right. Right. Um, so she goes to five, five, five Pussy Willow drive <laughs> and knocks on the door and who answers it, but Maya Edenholt. 
So she talks to Maya and Maya is like dressed like a princess. She described that she's wearing like this really long flowy dress. She has a beautiful sapphire bracelet on her wrist. She is like all done up. It's also like the middle of the day. Not like she's (laughs) about to go out to some event or something. And Nancy's like, are are you going somewhere? And she's like, oh yeah, hopefully eventually I'm just trying this on because we're going to go on vacation tomorrow for three weeks. Mm hmm. But so Nancy talks to her and she kind of tries to lead the conversation around to Peter. She says like, oh, I'm writing an article for the paper and I would love to do an interview with Peter about the elderly assistance program because I just think it's such a great program or whatever. And she also starts talking about like how kind of suggests that a lot of girls at the elderly assistance program are into Peter. Mm -hmm. And Maya is like super annoyed at this suggestion. She gets very jealous and is like, you know, I don't think Peter is going to want this interview. You know, he's very private person. Mm -hmm. You know, why don't you go ahead and just go? But Nancy was able to find out. I forgot this part. Nancy was able to find out. She asked her about the property that she's staying on. Yeah, because it's like this huge, massive Victorian Mm -hmm. home with like a giant pond. And then there's a cabin beyond the pond. And it's just sprawling grounds. Mm -hmm. She finds out that there is a fishing cottage in the back and that they are just renting this property i was really confused about this because she also at one point says that they are house sitting right but she does say that they have some kind of lease for this property Mm -hmm. so i do think they are renting it but i'm not sure and it's also suspicious because nancy when she goes into the living room there's only a couch like there's no other furniture Mm -hmm. there's nothing hanging on the walls there's no rugs anything like that it's an empty room and a couch and Maya's just like oh well we put all the valuables in storage for while we're on vacation Don't worry about it. She also asked Maya because she says, oh, I got this address from Ava. Why did Ava have this address? And Maya says, oh, well, uh, Peter probably just asked her to drop something off. But like she hasn't been over here, you know, Mm -hmm. with Peter. She's never been here before. It's fine. Stop implying things. Okay. Right. He would never. Okay. Sure. So basically Maya tells her to fuck off. (laughs) And so she leaves. And when she gets to like the dorm lobby, somebody is on duty in the lobby. And she says like, hey, someone's been like frantically trying to reach you. And so she says, we'll just hang out here because she's probably going to call again. And so Bess calls again and says, hey, you're never going to guess what just happened. I was just seeing one of my elderly assistance program clients And she gave me a ring to put in her safety deposit box. (gasps) We found the box. (laughs) Ding, 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 ding. We now understand what all these references were about. They were about safety deposit boxes Mm -hmm. from the elderly assistance program. So this box that whoever's calling mentioned is probably about a safety deposit box that one of these elderly assistance program clients uses. Mm -hmm. So So, she's going to go meet Bess at the bank. Right. So the the bank guy, when they arrive at the bank, Mm -hmm. the, I guess, bank teller starts giving them some background information on safety deposit boxes, how they work, how um, no one should be able to access these boxes except for the owners themselves, which would be the the elderly people in this program, and then anyone that they've authorized. And of course, Bess, Bess is authorized now to deposit or withdraw things from the safety deposit boxes Um, and so assume or he says that most of the assistants in the elderly assistance program are also authorized and guess who else is peter peter hoffs yes yeah he is the one who basically set this whole thing up Bess also tells nancy that he's the one who told her client that a safety deposit box would be a good idea to store valuables in Mm -hmm. he is the one who authorizes all the employees to get into the safety deposit boxes um and so yeah but apparently the person at the bank there says that he never comes himself Right. It's only ever the elderly assistance employees. And so Nancy's kind of confused about this because if they were attempting to steal from safety deposit boxes, which is kind of the logical assumption from that, how would that work unless he involved the elderly assistance employees, which seems risky because it's just a bunch of college students, right? It seems like someone would probably turn him in for that. Mm -hmm. 
The guy at the bank does confirm that there's no way for Nancy to get into Ava's safety deposit box because she's not authorized on Ava's box. And also that key is not even from their bank. So um, there's really no way for them to find out what bank it is because that just increases the security on the key. Mm hmm. But he does let both Bess and Nancy back to get into um, her client's safety deposit box, mm -hmm. and, which I thought was weird. He was like, I'll just let you go in just, just this once just to show you what it's like. And it's like, you're a terrible <laughs> bank employee. Your security, security protocols that you were literally just explaining to Nancy, you're just breaking just now. Mm -hmm. Just so she can see that they work. Well, clearly they she don't. Just, but <laughs> And so they go to put the ring into the woman's box and they open it up and there's nothing exciting in, in the box. There's no just, fancy jewels or anything. It's just some costume jewelry and some, some old letters. letters. Yeah. Yeah. Kind, of sad, but... kind of sad. And Bess is super disappointed too, because she wanted to, she wanted to see nothing in the box so that they could have broken the case open. Cause then they would have known that Peter Hoffs was stealing. Right. But instead we just see, some normal everyday items in the safety right. deposit box. But then Nancy gets a little idea, mm -hmm. calls up Betsy and says, does Betsy have a bank account anywhere? And Betsy or says, does Ava, does Ava have a bank account? Yes. Does Ava have a bank account anywhere? Thank you. <laughs> uh, she says, yes, she has one at Middleton Savings Bank. So Nancy decides to head over there with the key. <laughs> and she goes into the bank and impersonates Ava with her old student ID mm -hmm. pretends that it's her and pretends that her like she hurt her finger or something yeah, I and so my she, finger so I can't sign my name and that's why my signature doesn't match yeah but the bank employee is like okay whatever and <laughs> fine let's go back to your box she just lets her back there and um, she opens a safety deposit box and sees a beautiful sapphire necklace and a beautiful sapphire ring and a missing and a spot, a missing little, an indentation where something else should go. Hmm. Something the size of maybe a matching bracelet. Perhaps? Maybe a matching bracelet. Hmm. Where have I seen a matching sapphire bracelet? Oh, yes. perhaps oh. on the wrist of Maya Edenholm. Oh. <laughs> When Nancy was there earlier today, she was wearing a, a sapphire bracelet that matched this set. So now we understand a little bit more, right? We understand that there has indeed been theft from these EAP clients um, and that that's what the phone calls must have been about. They must have caught wind of this theft mm -hmm. and then switched the boxes. Right. So Nancy right. gets another idea. She takes out the jewelry box from the safety deposit box kind of stuffs it in her jacket and goes over to the bank guy and is like, oh, I actually need to open a second safe deposit box. I thought I had enough space in my box for this jewelry case, but I don't. Can we just open up another box? And he's like, all right, fine. I'll get the paperwork. You'll have to sign everything again. And it's, he's like, but, but my finger, can you put <laughs> my finger? Can't you just fill it out for me? And he's like, okay, fine, whatever. And she's like, also, um, this is kind of a strange request, but can you hold on to the keys for me? Because I'm afraid I'm going to lose them before I come back tomorrow for them. He's oh. like, well, that's highly unusual, miss, but sure, I'll hold okay. on to the keys for you. Y'all, Nancy is like, this is the most unrealistic thing. I know. I cannot. Either all all of these bank employees are just like absolutely incompetent and just mm -hmm. won't, don't follow their own policies and procedures or like Nancy is the most like believable, like convincing goddess, which I guess is possible. Yeah. But like, geez, a lot of acting lessons. <laughs> yeah. And also, yeah, like taking a lot of liberties in this situation, too. Just cross your fingers and hope that nobody's suspicious, Nancy. But so luckily that works out. Mm -hmm. And she's able to switch the hidden jewelry and another safety deposit box and leaves the key with the teller. Right. She concludes that Ava likely figured out what Peter was up to. And so to protect her clients, she took the jewels from the client's box and then put them into her own safety deposit box. Right. And then Ooh. I assume went to confront Peter and that's why she's missing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, we have to find Peter Holt. 
right? We have to figure out where, oh no, because the one, so the one thing that we don't understand yet is how Peter Holt was able to get into these safety deposit boxes. Because mm -hmm. from what the teller at the other bank told us, Peter never goes there in person. So mm -hmm. how, and also he doesn't have any of the keys. The keys stay with the clients or with the EAP employees whenever mm -hmm. they go to and from. But that's it. So he doesn't have any access to that. So how is he able to steal these goods? This is another moment where I was confused because yes. I didn't understand how we made the jump from Maya has the silver bracelet on her wrist to Peter as the one doing the stealing. I was like, well, isn't it Maya who's doing the stealing because Maya had the stolen property? Shouldn't we be asking ourselves, how did Maya break into the safety deposit boxes? Right. But we just assume that it's Peter. Well, he is the one with the the idea for the boxes in the first place. So oh, we true. know he's associated, but then we also know that he is a sculptor. And Nancy's like, he must have some plaster around with which he could make copies of keys. So we need to go find his workshop because that's the only thing we didn't see on the house tour when we were uh, with Maya the other day. So Nancy and Bess decide to go back to the house and see if they can locate where the workshop is. Right. They go back to 555 Pussy Willow Drive and um, basically sneak and skulk around until they get to, I guess it's like a garage. Yeah. And in it, they find Peter's workshop and they find molds of safety deposit box keys mm -hmm. that he's made to copy them. So now we understand that Peter has been getting these keys from EAP employees, making molds of them and giving them back so that he can get into those safety deposit boxes later. Mm -hmm. But Ava's still missing. Yes. <laughs> which is our, the, the reason why we started investigating this mystery in the first place. Mm -hmm. And Nancy is like, okay, there's one house on this, there's one more location on this property that, that we need to investigate. And that is the fishing cottage right. in the back. So she and Bess, basically, they're just like running back behind this property and there's like this space where there's no cover. And so they're like, well, we're just going to have to run for it and hope they don't see us. Mm. So they run to the cottage and Nancy tells Bess to go one way around the cottage while she goes the other way around the cottage to look for an entrance. This is a rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Never split up. Mm -hmm. Don't split up, especially when you're at the climax of a book. Right. <laughs> Worst time to do it. <laughs> And um, so as Nancy is walking around and Bess is walking around the other place or the other side, Bess comes back around and she says, Nancy. And we see that Peter Hoffs has Bess at gunpoint. Mm -hmm. And so he takes them inside the cabin. Ava is tied up in there, um, tied to a chair and tells Maya because Maya's already in the cabin and says, Maya, tie Bess and Nancy up. Mm hmm. They like tie them to like this bed frame. Which... Just Nancy. Yeah. I think Bess oh, is in a Nancy? chair and mm, Nancy's okay. on the bed. Yeah. Yeah. That was real creepy mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. I think, I don't know if she's actually like on the bed or like on the side of the bed. It seemed like she's um, kind of sitting on the floor with her arms right. kind of wrapped around the bed post and that's what she's tied to or around mm -hmm. the bed frame or something. I right. don't know. But it was still just a creepy implication. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so he ties her up and Nancy, hold on. This is his villain speech, essentially. Yeah. He does admit to killing Luke pretty much right away, unprompted. Pretty much immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Nancy kind of like talks to him a little bit. And, you know, they say that like, well, they're about to leave town. Basically, they're not going to come back. They're going to get away. But Nancy kind of tempts him a little bit and she's like, oh, well, it's too bad that you never found that safety deposit box key. Too bad you don't have like the matching set. Maya would have looked gorgeous with the necklace. Yeah. In there. yeah. And she is able to and she tells him that, you know, she has the safety deposit box key in her pocket. Mm -hmm. And so he is like, OK, Ava, come on. We're going to into your safety deposit box. And so he takes Ava at gunpoint. But apparently there are two guns. I didn't realize that at first, but apparently there are two guns. Mm -hmm. He takes Ava at gunpoint out of the cabin, takes Nancy's safety deposit box key, and tells Maya to stay there and watch the both of them. Mm -hmm. So Maya has both Nancy and Bess at gunpoint in the cabin still. 
So Nancy gets Ava talking. <laughs> and she's basically there trying gets to... Maya know, talking. Oh, yeah, sorry. Maya talking. And eventually fakes a seizure? Oh, well, no. So first she's able to loosen the bonds around her wrist. She's mm-hmm. able to get one wrist free. I think they're on the spring, the springs of the bed. Her okay. wrists are tied to the springs. That because she sense. was able to use, like, the flex of the spring to get her hands looser and enough to get a hand out. Right. So after she gets a hand out of her bindings, she fakes a seizure so that Maya will come over to her and that she can knock the gun out of her hand. So mm-hmm. she does that. She basically tackles Maya actually. And she does that. And both Bess and Nancy are able to get Maya. Do they tie up Maya? They do. Yeah. They tie her yeah. to the chair now. They tie her up. Now, Nancy makes the decision (laughs) to leave the gun. It doesn't come into play later, so it's fine. But Nancy does leave the gun. And instead, their plan is to, whenever Peter comes back, wait behind the door because the door apparently swings both ways. That's convenient. Right. (laughs) And it's to wait behind the door. And whenever he's right outside, to push the door So it'll knock him over. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad this worked because immediately when they described this to me, I saw a very obvious flaw in this plan, which was that Ava would be the one (laughs) opening the door. Right. Because he has Ava at gunpoint. Right. Right. So she would be in front of him. Right. And he would tell her to open the door. But I guess that's not what happened because Peter opened the door and as he did, they were able to knock him over with the door and they yell at Ava to run and they all run. They just run out of the cabin, run through the woods to try to get away from Peter and Peter is like chasing them. And Ava starts to run on the frozen lake, I guess. In Why does she run for the pond instead of following Nancy into the forest? Well, I think they were going towards the house. Yeah. So I don't know if the house was like, or the pond was like, or lake or whatever it is in between the cabin and the house. And Nancy and Bess were trying to go around it, but Ava just decided to go straight straight across, I guess. Um, And of course, when anybody runs across a frozen body of water in a work of fiction, what has to happen except that they fall through? So Ava and Peter, Peter dives for Ava. And as he dives for Ava, they crack the ice, break through the ice and fall through the ice. Nancy and Bess are heroic as hell right here. (laughs) Nancy's like, Bess, grab my ankles. I'm going in, goes into the (laughs) ice, grabs her. is like, pull Bess and pulls them both backwards. And they get Ava out of the water. Um, And she's okay. Very luckily at this exact moment too, the police show up and rescue Peter. So Peter is not dead under the ice, although it serves him right, but Mm -hmm. he is saved by the police and Mm -hmm. does go to jail. So he gets his just rewards. And who comes with the police but Darian? Darian, creepy Darian, watching as always. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We get get a flash forward to um, where they are in front of a fire at the Woods' home. Everybody's warm now. Ava is safe. And we kind of unpack what has just happened. Mm -hmm. And we learn that after Betsy talked to Nancy and told her about Ava's bank, she got worried and she called Darian. And they um, went to the bank to try to, I guess, meet Nancy and see what was going on. But instead, when they got there, they saw Peter with Ava and they obviously followed him because they knew that Ava was missing. And instead of calling the police, they just let Peter take Ava again. Yeah. And followed them all the way to the 555 Pussy Willow Drive house. And this is when he called the police. Then called the police. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Like, seriously. Why not do something immediately and then make Peter talk and go find his best later? Like, they were at a bank. They were at a bank, one of the most like protected businesses that There's exists. Probably a security guard at you the door. Could have, yes, or like you could have gone up to a teller and been like, "You need to push a silent alarm. That is a missing girl. That is potentially someone who has kidnapped her. And like committed get murder. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, 
everybody's safe. Everybody's fine. Peter does go to prison. So I guess it turned out okay. We're just, you know, ignoring the fact that everybody could have been shot by Peter before that happened. But everybody ended up okay. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. And we do learn that Vince and Ava are back together. After all of this struggle and all this drama, they're all cuddled up in front of the fire and cozy. And also Ava's parents come in (laughs) and like... This is the weirdest part. They like, oh, by the way, the dean called and he wants the elderly assistance program to become a campus service, but only if you run it, Ava. Happy ending. Ava's now Happy running ending. the program. And then we get this poke fun at Bess where Ava's like, oh, oh yeah. Bess, do you want to come work for me? And Bess is like, no, but I could do uh, campus connections. I'll only yeah. do dating. I can't do elderly assistance anymore. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. So that's number 66, Tall, Dark, and Deadly. What a romp. Where do we want to start? I mean, oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. So I think the very first thing that came to my attention that I was like, okay, we have to talk about this is the fact that they are quote unquote transfer students. And if they are transfer students. For a non-academic semester. Right. Right. Okay. (laughs) But the dean specifically says that he will transfer them. The note that's given to Nancy is... References a transfer student. Right. Transfer back wherever you came from. And also when she's in the car with Bess at the very beginning, she says, remember going back to school at the end of summer, getting ready to study hard. So we're they're heavily implying the fact that Nancy and Bess go to school somewhere else. I don't know. She does, when they're describing the campus itself, Nancy's like, oh, wow, this looks a lot like Ned's campus, Emerson Mm -hmm. College. So maybe they were just talking about going back to high school after break and studying, and then their actual college experiences are just like on behalf of Ned somehow. I don't know. Potentially. And potentially all of the references to transferring was just like a way to like make it college language, you know, like, oh, okay, well, they're going to be coming here as students. So we're going to use the word transfer because that's Mm -hmm. what makes sense. But I don't know. I think Mm -hmm. there's a real convincing argument to the fact or to the thought, the idea that Nancy and Bess are enrolled in another school somewhere and they just don't talk about it fascinating Very yeah a cool little peek into nancy's normal everyday life what is i just nancy? find yeah i just find it so interesting that nancy the titular character to these books is someone who is like so characterized through the whole thing we know so much about like who she is as a person about her yeah her character traits about that she is like intelligent brave charismatic like we know all of these things about nancy you know logical all that stuff but we don't know the very basics of her everyday life right we don't know like when she wakes up in the morning and she's not solving a mystery what does she do where does she go like what does she do with her time are we just supposed to believe that she just solves mysteries all the time and then doesn't do anything in between apparently maybe she doesn't have time in between I just think it's so interesting and especially considering like her age where in all of the different iterations of these series is in the mystery stories and in the Nancy Drew files, like these like teen years, 16 to 18 are years of great transition and action for young people. Mm -hmm. There are times where like they would be moving on to some kind of school, secondary school or post-secondary school, or they would be getting married or there there are things that like would be... Right, would be expected at this time, but Nancy is just in this weird limbo. Mm -hmm. It's just so fascinating. So fascinating. Maybe they just want us to see her characterization as it is related to mysteries. We don't want any part of her identity to be associated outside of mysteries. You know, her job Mm -hmm. isn't as important. Her school isn't as important to her to be part of who she is and her identity. All of that is secondary to being logical, being Nancy Drew, solving mysteries. And that yeah. is just the identity that they want us to have for her. And yeah. that it's irrelevant because it's just not important to her. Yeah, I agree. I yeah, I think it's super smart. I think it's a super smart decision mm-hmm. to not include that kind of detail because that would probably, you know, 
shoehorn Nancy in a certain way. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. then we would have to like kind of talk about that stuff, whereas it's really not important. Right. Um, but it's just I find it so out of the ordinary. Like oh, yeah. most most mystery stories, like we know who the main character is and what they're involved in. It's like really it's like integral to the plot. It's like, why are they the detective? Right. You know, we don't know why Nancy is the detective, aside from like the fact that she has all these connections, right? Like we just know that she is. She just mm-hmm. is. That's just what she does. Like right. there's no context to her sleuthing. It just, she just does it. So it's just fascinating. Just, yeah, different. Anyway, so that was the very first thing that I, I noticed. Let's see what else. Oh, I did know when she was unpacking all her stuff in, in her dorm, she says that like she brought two dresses, but she unpacked her jeans and sweaters, jeans and sweaters in a suitcase. Anyone? Mom jeans, a horse t-shirt, perhaps. Horse t-shirt, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, it starts here. It starts here. If you don't get that reference, go play the Her Interactive Games and you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy always has a suitcase with mom jeans, the horse t-shirt, and like a couple sweaters. Yeah. It's fantastic. Let's see. Oh, we should talk about race. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Okay. After my at my first read through, the only thing that I noted was that there are two characters that they describe as having dark skin. Mm. They don't qualify what that means. They don't call any student black. They don't call any student Hispanic. We don't get any descriptors like that. But we do get two characters that are described as having dark skin. And that is Betsy, Ava's roommate, Mm. and Darian, the reporter. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that that was fascinating Yes, because they leave it pretty ambiguous. And especially when you're looking at the cover art for Mm -hmm. this book, it doesn't really look to me like any characters on there have dark skin. I wouldn't say no. Yeah, no, definitely all of the characters on the cover are at least white passing, if not actually white. And so... My question is, is their descriptor of dark skin, is that just a way to say that they are being inclusive of characters of different races Mm -hmm. and also a way for them to kind of slide under the radar of not actually (laughs) having characters of color because dark skin could just mean someone with a tan. Right. You know, like that's not, you know, that's not very qualifying. Right. Right. Which, hmm, hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. I will say that if those characters are supposed to be characters of color, then they are very fleshed out, full characters with, you know, their own motives, backstory. Right, right. They're like full characters in the story. They participate fully, Darian especially, but Betsy also. But also both Betsy and Darian date each other. right. And so I was like, okay. Are we putting them into a box? Right. A bit? Are we putting them in a box? But is also, is this supposed to be a clue that yes, they are in fact characters of color mm-hmm. because they're both dating each other? I don't know. It was just interesting. Right. But other than that, there's really no mention no. of race other than no. the reference that two characters may or may not have darker skin. I mean, I will say too that they, they don't mention when a character has light skin. Right. They never make that. They never say, oh, Ava, pale skin. Actually, you know what? They might because they say they're talking about the picture where she sees Betsy and Ava side by side. So I think Mm. like she's comparing the two of them. But um, but aside from that, everybody else, Maya, Peter, like we get no description of their complexions. And then we also get so. okay. So Nancy picked up a large silver framed photograph that was sitting on the desk. Betsy was in it, her dark skin and hair contrasting that with that of the pretty girl she hugged. Which also, are we saying that she's not pretty? Because... Sounds like it. (laughs) That's harsh. So the girl on the cover cannot be Betsy. It has to either be Ava Ava or or Bess. Bess, possibly. Right. But so, okay. Yeah, I just realized this now, too. She says, her dark skin and hair contrasting with the pretty girl she just hugged nancy asked pointing to the girl with the long wavy blonde hair and brown eyes so mm-hmm. like literally she's saying that dark skin and dark hair 
aren't pretty. Right. What the mm. fuck? I hope that that's just written as like a, we're telling you that Ava is really pretty, but mm-hmm. why do you have to do it in comparison to someone else? Yeah. Like, you just say contrast. Ava's pretty. Like they specifically use the word contrast. Yeah. That's, that's pretty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty obvious there, what they're trying to imply. Oh boy. Yeah. Yikes. So there's your racism. There it is right there, folks. You can't avoid it. You can't have one book without it. Maybe one day. Maybe we'll get into some of the Nancy Drew diaries. And hopefully those maybe will be a little better. <laughs> the ones for little children? The ones for little children, yes. Yes, Corey, yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Listen, hopefully. I can only hope I can only hope for improvements in the future. And this book was written in 1991. I can only hope that we have come farther now. You know, I wouldn't say that I would expect it, <laughs> but one can hope. One yeah. can hope. At least we have characters of color. Well, true. we don't even specifically know that they are characters true. of color. She All could true. just be a brunette with a tan. Like, yep. Yep. <sighs> Jesus. Okay. Well, anyway. Okay. I was very confused because, so in the cabin, in our big confrontation scene when Peter is taking Ava out to go to the bank, to the safety deposit box. I'm just going to read you this really quickly. So Peter shoved Ava out the door, his gun pointed at her back. The sound of the slamming door echoed in the small cabin. Nancy could hear a scraping noise as Peter threw the bolt and locked the four of them in. The four of them? Who's the four of them? Who is the four of them? There's Nancy. Bess and Maya, Ava and Peter are out the door. Is this just a mistake? A mistake? Or did I miss something? No, I don't think you missed anything. I think there's only five people total and two of them leave. Right. Okay. I didn't catch that. That's Hmm. the thing I noticed. I was really confused for a while. I was like flipping back. I was like, wait, did Ava leave or did Ava not leave? But it clearly says Peter shoved Ava out the door. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what am I missing? <laughs> and why is someone lock, else? Why lock Maya in there if she's the one with the gun and the other two people are tied up? No, so Corey, apparently he regularly locks Maya in this cabin. Oh. Yes. Did you miss this part? Hold I on, did miss on, this on, part, on. apparently. Um, let's see. Um It did very much seem that Maya is being kind of forced into this, that she's mm-hmm. being taken advantage of. Okay, I swear. He locks her up in here. Oh, no, yeah, here we go, here we go. So Maya, Nancy began, hoping her voice would cover the noise of uncoiling spring. Does he always lock you in? And Maya gave Nancy an angry stare. He does it for my own protection. You won't try to attack me if you can't get out. But, like, so he he locks, he locks her, her in. in regularly. Regularly, yeah. Ugh. So that's sinister. Um, yeah. Peter is creepy. Peter's creepy. Nancy's tied to a bed. He ripped her jacket off. He regularly locks Maya in this cabin. Yikes. Mm -hmm. He also has all the girls at the elderly assistance program fawning over him. He's a creepy guy. Real creepy creepy guy. Mm -hmm. Um, But so you wanted to talk about Bess? Yes. Where's George? Yeah, where is George? There's no George in this one. She's not mentioned. I'm kind of glad. Listen, I don't have anything against George, but I just find their Bess and George's dynamic together to be quite um, fraught Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, and conflict heavy. And so it was kind of nice to just have kind of Bess tagging along with Nancy. And Bess was super supportive of Nancy. Oh, yeah. She She was was super. Yeah, she was super helpful in her investigation. And Nancy gave her a lot of stuff to do, you know go to the elderly assistance program, try to date Jim, set up a date with Vince. And Bess was on it. Oh, yeah. And Bess was helpful and, like, getting clues and stuff. Um, And it does seem like Bess is really in her element in this book. And I think a lot of that does have to do with dating. And she feels really confident in that dating world, right? So she feels like, yes, okay, this is my time to shine. Mm -hmm. And maybe it wouldn't have been like that so much if George was around. 
Right. Maybe they would have had to compete a little bit more to impress Nancy or try to find their own avenues to succeed and look competent. Um, right. But instead, Bess gets to do most of that because she's the only one there. I like it when Bess gets to shine. Okay. She's wonderful. She is wonderful. Um, so I will say, I didn't really notice any comments about Bess's weight in this book. Yeah, me neither. Except for the ice cream. She was like, oh, Bess, did you have time to eat ice cream? Because when she's pretending that her finger is broken at the bank, Bess is like, oh, I have this popsicle stick in the back seat. Why don't you just like put that in your glove and pretend that it's a splint, which whatever. But Nancy does make a comment like, oh, have you been eating ice cream again, Bess? So what? Bess is allowed to have oh. an ice cream or a popsicle, whatever. Well, I missed that. But the only other thing that I did notice related, notice related to weight in this book is they describe the girl from the elderly assistance program as chunky. Oh, they do. I didn't catch that. And I was like, whoa, like we like it was just such a different description than what we usually get. Mm -hmm. We usually get plump. We get plump mm -hmm. a lot. We get I think I think we got in curvy. I think Bess was described as curvy mm -hmm. in maybe two points to murder or something. Uh, one of the other files books. But chunky, chunky. We have not. Gotten one. Before. Yeah. It's a new one. And I was just like, like, What? <laughs> What kind of remark is that? Um, she Come in, Bess called. Nancy opened the door and saw Bess was not alone. She was sipping hot chocolate with a chunky girl whom Nancy had never seen before. Good Lord. This is Sophie. I don't know. I don't necessarily know how I feel about the descriptor of chunky. Mm. I, I definitely think it's worse than curvy or right. even plump. Um, plump. Right. Mm. Um, but also like... I don't know, like at least, at least it's not like a, you know, this person who was plump, but pretty, right? You know, at least it's just a descriptor instead of like a, a qual, like a qualification. In contrast to her beauty, she was right. chunky. Like, right, mm -hmm. right, right. But uh, I don't know. At least we're not comparing her to anyone. True. I just don't like the word chunky. Yeah, I don't like it either. But. Anyway, I'm just astounded that Darian did nothing when he sees the missing girl. And he's like, <laughs> I'm just going to follow them. Let's go, Betsy. Let's follow him. With her yeah. boss at gunpoint and like, hmm, nothing suspicious there. I'm just going to see how this plays out. I'm assuming that she must not have been at gunpoint in the bank. Because oh, I hope not. I hope not. But I'm sure that that or at least was concealed well enough to where no one noticed. But yeah. I also wonder why Ava didn't try to do anything at the bank because there would yeah. have been a moment where she had access to other like, people. If she, yeah. If she was going to go to this safety deposit box, surely she would have gone back alone with the bank guy because when Nancy tried to mm. go back, it was like this weird thing like, Oh yeah, I'll let you back this time. But then at the other bank, they wouldn't let Bess go back because like right. they weren't authorized. So why did like surely she would have been alone with other people at some point and could have gotten their attention or mm. said something to them or asked them to call the police. And yeah, she was worried about Nancy and Bess because the implication was mm. we'll kill you if you try anything smart, but there's no cell phones. How would Maya have known? You know, it's not like Peter yeah. could have just called and been like, okay, shoot Nancy and Bess now because Ava got wise. Also though, Ava doesn't know Bess and Nancy. Right. That's not her friends. Peter, <laughs> Peter calls met. them her friends, but like, yeah, they've never met before. She doesn't know really who they are or why they're there. They could be other employees of this program yeah. that are also in trouble. I appreciate that potentially she is doing that to protect them, these people mm -hmm. that she doesn't know. But like, yeah, I mean, like if it were me, I'd be like, help. Hey, this could be your only chance. He's going to murder you as soon as you go back anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Risk, risk the danger, you know, in favor of another situation where you're definitely all going to get murdered. Mm -hmm. Like, just risk mm -hmm. it because this is the only other chance that you're going to get. Make a yeah. scene at the bank. Get the security guard involved. Tell the bank teller to, to sound the alarm. Mm -hmm. Because what is he going to do? Go all the way back to the the house and then tell Maya to shoot them? No. Yeah. By then, he's going to be in police custody and the, the police will have taken, like, they've gone back to the cabin to get everybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Like Ava could have just told the police to go back and get them. Well, also too, I mean, 
so she's been in that cabin for two days. Mm -hmm. Um, And Nancy, yeah, Nancy talks about how cold it is. It doesn't like Ava isn't wearing like anything. She's wearing like high heels or something. So like she must be pretty cold. Mm -hmm. And also like we don't have any kind of indication that he's been feeding her or um, taking care of her in any way. So it's very possible too that she's not in any kind of lucid state. Right. Um, um, yeah. So I don't know. They don't really talk about that. And they don't, Ava doesn't really say a whole lot in that scene. So we don't really get an indication either way, but it's possible. So we blame the bank guy who didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. That there's this like malnourished girl in three day old clothes bedraggled hair Mm -hmm. being dragged in by this older guy and being told get valuables out of your box Mm -hmm. i mean that is the most likely scenario for me because i we have already seen the incompetence of these (laughs) bank people so i find that not not unlikely They should be trained like something suspicious is going on here. Someone is being forced. I'm sure bank employees in real life are quite, in fact, quite trained on this person seems to be under duress. Something might be going on. We should call the police. So. Oh, my gosh. And never mind that they were like, didn't notice that it's not the same Ava Woods who came in half an hour prior. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. I didn't even think about that. Because Nancy's oh like, gosh. hold on to the keys for me, and when I come back for them tomorrow, I'll sign the for them or whatever. Sign. And then Ava Woods comes back in 30 minutes later, a different person, different outfit, <laughs> with someone else, and is like, give me my box. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And it can't have been anybody else. It's the span of less than an hour. Right. Like the- It's not shift change at the last half hour of the day. Oh it's not a new staff my coming in. gosh. Someone that- at the bank is at fault. <laughs> Had they been murdered, they would have been like held responsible. Like, why didn't oh, you say something or do God. something? Clearly something's up. Or like check the register, see that the signatures are different. They go on and on about all these security protocols for the safety deposit boxes, about the cameras that they have, the register they have to check signatures against and everything. People aren't allowed to go back with you. And all every single one of these like rules and protocols gets broken in this book. And 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 nothing like nothing happens. We're not supposed to like think anything weird is going on with the banks. But really, I mean, it's not the elderly assistance program that is, like, criminal. It's these banks. What is the the bank doing here? The banks clearly can't can't keep up with their own safety deposit boxes or who's coming in and going out and and renting out these safety deposit boxes. Maybe they're in on it with Peter. Oh. There's the real conspiracy. There we have it. (laughs) Oh. Wow. So, I don't know if that's a plot hole, but... It's weird I, think, to me. I think that's definitely the best and biggest plot hole that I've got. <laughs> I have a question too. Is it possible to copy safety deposit box keys? Using dental plaster? I I don't I truly don't know the answer to this question, so maybe it is and I'm just wrong. But I just don't understand how that would be possible. Because from what I understand about safety deposit box keys or what I imagine safety deposit box keys to look like because i guess i've never actually had a personal safety deposit box so i couldn't speak to it but i thought that they were um round keys like the end of it they were round and the tumbler was like on the inside of the circular hmm. mechanism sure. do you know what i'm talking about yeah um and so it to make a mold of it they would have to somehow get the plaster inside of the circle, the key, right. which I'm pretty sure would ruin the key. Right. Because. Or break off when you remove it from the plaster. Right. Hmm. Or just like wouldn't be effective. Like you, you either couldn't get it all the way in and so the mold wouldn't be complete. Or if you did get it in, you wouldn't be able to get it all the way out. Or yeah, when you did, it would somehow screw with the key. So I don't I don't really understand the science and the mechanics of that. So that confused me too. Also, how does having the fake key benefit him if there's going to be a record either way? 
Cause like you have to sign in and like, yeah, it saves him the trouble of like telling the clients, Hey, I'm going to your box today. Can I borrow the key? Anything like that. So it's less obvious to the owner of the box, but the bank is still going to see Peter signed in on this day. Cause otherwise how would he even get into the room with the safety deposit box keys? Cause the bank has to do the first lock. Well, so it's not actually him who's been going to the safety deposit box keys. It's actually been Maya. Oh, oh, for right. him. They explain that. They explain that. But, but I mean, the still. same rule still applies. She still has to sign in. So if something were missing from a safety deposit box, which you at least one person has noticed that something is missing, mm-hmm. then you would think they'd be like, "What? How is something missing from my safety deposit box?" Hmm, let's check the register of everybody who has got into my safety deposit box to see if my EAP, whatever, the only other person who goes into my safety deposit box got in here without me knowing and stole something. If right. I were like a client, that would be the first thing I would right. do. I and guess it would probably okay. show on this day Maya checked it out. Well no, I guess there. I guess that actually is legitimately what happens. Okay. That's that's what happens, is that <laughs> I'm so stupid. I can't believe it. Then that's what happens with that one client is that um, uh, Ava goes to put something in her safety deposit box, sees the bracelet is missing, Mm -hmm. tells the um, elderly client and decides at that point to switch the boxes to prevent anything further from being stolen. Must have checked the register and saw that Maya had signed in to steal the bracelet and then goes to confront so, so why did Ava decide to handle this on her own? Rather why not than, go to the police? Right. So that's why she even had the client's jewelry in the first place is because she took it with the client's right. permission to keep yes. it out of Peter's hands to keep it safe. But yes, still, why not go to the police? She directly goes to confront him instead. It's also just, yeah, it, like it's just a case of missing property. It's not like there's a situation where there's any kind of imminent danger to anyone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, go to the police and be like, Hey, I think this guy's stealing from his clients. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now that see, every time we do this at the very beginning, I'm like, I really like this book. And then once we get all the way past the summary and all the way to the end where we're discussing everything, I'm like, there's so many holes in this mm-hmm. story. So many holes it doesn't hold up under scrutiny. Oh, it doesn't make them any less enjoyable. I will say right. they're so fun to read, regardless of all this stuff. And honestly, because of all this stuff, it does make it a little bit more fun sometimes yeah. to be like this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this is laughable. All the things oh. that make the safety deposit box like appealing to clients, all the reasons that they yeah. would have it are reasons that the theft doesn't really work out. Like they make it seem like it's this brilliant plan for the theft, but really it's not that brilliant of a plan <laughs> because of all the reasons that the clients have the boxes in the first place. Mm-hmm. Cause they're supposed to be so secure. In which Peter sells them on. He's the one who tells them this is a safe place to keep your stuff, which we're supposed to think is because he has the system rigged somehow, but really he doesn't have the system rigged. No. He's just un- unsuccessfully stealing from them. <laughs> which one oh. of his employees is able to figure out pretty easily on her own just by chance, not even looking mm-hmm. into it, just mm-hmm. happens to notice. Right. <laughs> Are they dumb criminals or is it just a bad plot hole? (laughs) Mm, I'm going to go with dumb criminals because he does seem like a massive creep. And I just like to label him like that. Oh, he is. Yes, he's definitely a creep. Anyone who locks their (laughs) wife in a fishing cabin for her quote unquote safety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a murderer. I'm sorry. (laughs) Well, a murderer for a a, a confessed murderer too. So. Like yeah. pretty, pretty quickly. It's like, yeah, I killed Luke. What of it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Jeez, Louise. Stone cold. Anyway. Um, so Nancy gets knocked out in this one. Mm-hmm. But I do think that Bess. So finally, we see someone taking Nancy's injury somewhat seriously. Thank you, Bess. Bess, again, comes out as being a hero again, Bess. By talking to Nancy, she's like, are you okay? Do we need to go get you checked out? Nancy's like, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm going to go to bed. Bess is like, do you want me to sleep in your dorm room tonight? Mm. Like, Bess is is 
offering like appropriate concern for someone who has a head injury. Mm -hmm. Again, Nancy brushes it off and that we kind of expect at this point, Mm -hmm. but someone else is finally being like, hold on. (laughs) Red flag, flag on the play, slow down. What's going on? So thank you, Bess. Thank you, Bess, again. Hashtag team Bess. Bess is such a good friend. She is. She's a great friend. Oh, so one thing I noticed, too, is that she, so in addition to not treating her concussion as any big deal, she also, um, when she gets a threatening note, of course, she doesn't take it seriously or whatever, but she makes a comment. So she says, Nancy threw the note on her desk with a grim smile. She wasn't always this casual about warnings. Yes, she is. Yes, she (laughs) is! Every single time. Literally like, all the time. Any kind of threatening note, she's just like, meh, I don't care. Meh, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's not that serious. They didn't say it to my face, so... It's only a death threat. They didn't actually try to murder me yet. You're right. It's fine. <laughs> I just thought that was so funny. I was like, you, what do you mean you don't <laughs> always... Oh, yes, you do always discard these these threats nancy oh i made a note, I made a note of that too that's so funny <laughs> oh. oh okay do we want to give it a score sure <laughs> i will still give it a solid four out of five okay despite the plot holes despite all of it i don't know i just really really loved reading this one i thought like it's it's just this whole vibe. And mm. I love, you know, I love the concept of, I don't know, just the dating. I just think it's just a yeah. great, it's a great theme to center a book around. So I give it four to five flashlights. I'll also give it four. I'm glad that it didn't go the way that, like, you would think that it's going to go when you first start reading it. That, you know, she got murdered by an angry mm. date that, you know, she turned him down and then he got mad and killed her. I thought that that's where it was going to go. I'm glad it didn't. It was very intense, very well written. It's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to talk about what we're covering next? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead? Sure. So next up, we have number 39, The Suspect Next Door. Now, I don't know a whole lot about this. The only thing I know about this is that this is what sparked or was planned to start off the um, River Heights series. Mm-hmm. Which was like a Nancy Drew spinoff series um, that does not star Nancy Drew. No. It just focuses around like soap opera style romance drama within River Heights. Mm-hmm. I think it's supposed to, yeah, be akin to like a Sweet Valley High situation right. in River Heights, but it does feature um, a character that is very prominent in this book that we're going to read. So, the suspect next door. So we'll see you then, regular Drews. See you then. Thank you for listening to Regular Nancy Drew. Email us at regularnancydrew at gmail.com. If you liked this episode, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram at regularnancydrew and Twitter at regularnd. You can also support us on Patreon. Patrons at the $1 level receive early access to each episode as well as weekly bonus content. And to all you regular Drews out there, thanks for listening.